Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. Cheeky here, and we're going to be discussing the shows that I've dropped this season. I just decided that I can't keep watching them, man. I just can't. Now, I may have uh, touched upon this subject a little bit in the uh, couple of cuckoos first impression video I did. Um, but since then, a couple more have come up, and I figured I would just talk about each one for a little while, a little more in depth, better than the couple of cuckoos thing, you know what I'm saying? And I think it really kind of deserves its own video uh, for the uh, why I dropped stuff. So the first one we're going to be talking about is the Dawn of the Witch, also known as uh, Maho Tsukai Remakey, like that. Uh, so this one, it's, it's like a... Uh, is it a side story or a sequel of the Grimoire of Zero? I forget which it is, but essentially it's, same, it's set after the Grimoire of Zero happens. And I thought it was going to be cool. I liked the Grimoire of Zero. It was pretty cool. But like five episodes in to the show and I'm sitting there like, man, nothing has really happened in the show, and I'm still not getting a sense of what exactly the purpose of the show is. Um, but it's kind of, I went into it and I'm like, do I want to keep watching this show? Like, there's nothing that's every week drawing me back to watching it. Like, honestly, I don't know any of the characters' names. I can't remember any of them. The only one that I actually liked was the uh, the blonde haired Loli there, um, and even her name I don't I don't remember. Um, she was the least like insufferable of all of them. Like the main character is just soulless. I want to call him. Like his only redeeming quality is that he's semi optimistic, but he like doesn't show his feelings at all. So like he's like, yeah, you're okay. Stuff like that. Like I don't know. I just can't do it. And then the, like, from what I understand, it's set in the same world as Grimoire of Zero, but after that happens and a little while later. And so uh, there's still, like, the church prosecuting witches, but they're not supposed to be doing that. So everyone's supposed to be getting along with witches and stuff like that. And so the school or, or someone decides that, hey, we're going to have a village where normal people and witches live together, you know? And while living together, they're going to find out that, you know, witches aren't so bad, and it's going to spread and be like, cool, everything's going to have a happy, joyous time. And so our, uh, our main characters are sent there to live in this village. And uh, the first you know, couple of episodes up until the point I dropped it, they were going to the village. I think the last episode I watched, they arrived at the village. If I remember correctly. Um, but I just don't see where it could go from here. And I really don't want to watch just to find out what's going to happen. Because if they're just going to live in the village and some witch hunters are going to attack them every so often, it's not going to be that interesting of a show. To be honest, even the fact of them like going there and there was like a witch hunter they encountered and like they had the complete opportunity to kill this guy... Uh, I don't remember, did they kill the witch hunter in the forest? I think they, like, let him go, which honestly is stupid because uh, I feel like they definitely could have killed him. I don't remember. I can't even remember that, like, fact, whether or not they killed this guy in the thing. That tells you how much, like, the show is impactful for you. Yeah, I personally am not going to remember the show at all. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> The only reason I was like, yeah, I'll watch this show is because it was like a fantasy world, and I, I recognized the uh, characters from the Grimoire of Zero in the uh, image for it. And I was like, oh, is this a sequel? Question mark? But yeah, I, I just, I don't know. It never really clicked with me, is what I'm trying to say. And so I, 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 I don't like it. But yeah, that's it for that one. So let's move on to the next one on our list, shall we? And that one is The Executioner and Her Way of Life, or 
showcase shoujo no virgin road um i'm not sure how that translates to that because like virgin road is in english right so what part of virgin road is the executioner and her way of life shoujo's her right so shoke must be way of life Or is no supposed to be way of life? Maybe Shoke is executioner. The female executioner in her way of life is what I read that as, right? I don't know. Anyway, regardless, like this show I had high hopes for. I was like, this one's going to be interesting because it's an isekai where instead of focusing on the isekai protagonist who follows up on this character who lives in the world, whose job it is to assassinate and kill these uh, isekai, people who get summoned from another world, right? But quickly after the first episode happens uh, and they kill the first isekai guy who comes in, there's this isekai girl that uh, apparently has immortality and she can control time. So if she's about to die, she just rewinds time and it's fine. And uh, so uh, the main character, Menno, has to escort her to the church, essentially, to get her killed there. And the the Episode six is them being at the church and discovering something. I don't want to spoil it for anyone there, but the journey to the church was just so boring. Like the first two episodes, first episode was them introducing this thing and uh, the main characters meeting. The second one was them being like, hey, we uh, need to go to this church, you know, and we'll, you know, this. And then episodes three, four, and five I don't remember exactly what happened. I remember there was a train and they, uh, they went around in the train and there was a fight on the train. And then on five, they arrived in the town and they discovered something was happening. And then six is basically wrapping up what happened in episode five, essentially. So at that point, there's no real like what's going to happen next. The goal apparently is still to kill her for some reason, even though what happened in episode six is like, hey, you, you shouldn't really kill her, or maybe you should, or it, it gets weird in episode six. Because it's like maybe the, uh, the summoned girl, Akari, maybe she wants to die or wants to be killed. We don't really understand what's going on yet, but I don't know, I just, I cannot fathom what episode 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, the, the six episodes that are left, I cannot fathom what they're going to be other than just traveling around trying to kill this girl. And even like between episodes 2 and 6, there was not a whole lot of trying to kill this girl happening. It was basically like a slice of life kind of thing where they were like, going around shopping and talking to each other in a hotel and like occasionally this um, other priestess named Momo would come by and like liven things up and it was awesome. Momo was the best character in the show. Uh, but yeah, um, Akari as a heroine is forgettable. Menno, she is okay. She's got an interesting design and outfit. That's okay, that's cool. Um, but also very forgettable. Momo, who has a cute outfit, pink hair, is adorable. She's great. Uh, I like her as a character. But Akari is just bland. She's got the, the Japanese main character syndrome where she has, you know, generic black hair, a school uniform, and then, like, her only real decent feature is the fact that she has time powers and big tits. That's literally her own, like, qualities that are important there. Um, so I don't know. I, every time I came to watch this, I was like, okay, I'll watch this one. Maybe, maybe we're going to get back to killing and some crazy stuff happening. Um, but it just did not deliver. From episode, like, two to episode, like, five, nothing really exciting happened. Aside from a fight on a train, which wasn't even that exciting to be completely honest. Episode six kind of like height, heightened. Like it was like, okay, cool. I could, I could possibly watch the rest of this. But the fact that 
like the goal ends in episode six. Like the goal that they had at that particular moment in time was removed to six. And they don't have any other goal in mind yet other than killing Akari. Um, it was just like, what are they going to do now? It, it just feels like they're going to roam around the country looking for ways to kill this girl. And then they're going to end up in this one area that was kind of alluded to at the end of episode six. And I was just like, I don't get it. Because through their journey, the two of them seemed to grow closer. Which doesn't make any sense, by the way, if you think about it. Because the, the girl Menno, she's been set up as this priestess who, for the past 10 years, ever since she was like a child and her village was destroyed, she's been like emotionless and like being trained to kill uh, like the isekais, people who come from another world, the isekais, we'll call them. And she's been doing that. And then all of a sudden, like just because she like has these random dreams where sometimes she like has dreams that she's in Japan, ooh, you know, um, and she like sees Akari, this girl in her dreams, for some reason, she like starts catching feelings for Akari and is like, maybe I shouldn't kill her, you know, even though she's been brainwashed for like 10 fucking years. Trained to kill for 10 years. From like childhood to now. All of a sudden, she's just going to be like, eh, never mind. And start to like develop feelings for this girl for some reason. It, it's it's ridiculous. Like. Nothing Akari does is special. Nothing. Akari just, like, is cheerful and, like, hyper and, like, uh, says she likes Menno because Menno's nice to her. But the thing is, Menno has done this to other people where she acts nice to get to them, to kill them, right? And so Menno should know that this is all just her acting, that... You know, even though Akari's saying that she likes her, you know, you're still going to kill her, right? Surely Menno has had people who have acted like Akari before to her, acted nice and cheerful, and she still killed them, obviously. And yet, just because of this dream that, like, is very vague and, like, can't see a face, she just sees an outline of a person, she's going to, like, Suddenly snap out of her brainwashing priestess ways and whatever. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Also, in my first impression for the show, I had mentioned that their magic was like really cool and I liked it. And uh, I don't like it much anymore. It, it seems to be just like them glowing with like an outline and then like this uh, squarish like magic circle thing appearing with words in it. Occasionally, and like it happens, uh, it really hasn't had any like amazing visuals like the first episode where they summoned like a uh, a church and it you know killed people with its bell ringing. That was that was pretty cool, and it hasn't really happened since. Uh, everything else has just been pretty normal. In fact, Menno uses a dagger most of the time, where she just like throws the dagger with like a really simple spell on it, like a shocking spell, and that's all that happens. It's, it's like nothing fancy or cool, really. Um, so I, I wasn't into it. I gave it a good try. You know, I think I think half the season was a, a good try to give it a shot, but I don't know. I just can't see it. None of the characters other than Momo really spoke to me. And like, I like this character. It's a good character. You know, everyone else is just kind of generic or wishy-washy. Whereas Momo knows what she wants, sets out to get it, and like. All there is to her. I like that. Okay. But enough of that one. Let's move on to our next one. Up next is Tomodachi Game. And now I had spoken about this one in the uh, other video of a couple of cuckoos about why I dropped it. Well, I dropped it back on episode what, three, I think it was. And it was all because I didn't like the way it was going. 
Like it started out as like, hey, who is the person who's betraying the group of friends here? Is there even someone betraying the group of friends or are they manipulating the game on their side? Yada, yada, you know? And after episode three and stuff, it just got to be way too dramatic and not as psychological and like stuff as it was before. Because episode three and stuff essentially turned it into them just like throwing insults and rumors around and uh, basically easily easily getting turned upon each other. And even though the game rules said that you could lie in the thing, everyone is so obvious when something about them is true because they freak out like in a way that you would not normally do, right? Like, say someone exposes a secret about you, right? Of course you're going to be like, uh, that's that's false, you know. You're not gonna like go ah and scream your head off like one of the girls does and like freak out and shit. Like that you're gonna be like, oh yeah, that's just not true. You know, you're gonna play it off because at the end of the day, only the person who would have wrote it knows it's absolutely true because no one's gonna have proof. They're not gonna debate it with you on the uh, in the middle of the game. That's just not what's gonna happen. They don't even do that. They don't debate it. It's just them being like, oh my god, is that true? Like, they're a bunch of freaking gossiping Karens. Like, literally, maybe one or two of them will believe uh, in the person and believe that the rumor's false. And then the rest of them are like, oh my god, is that true? This is bullshit. I cannot believe you would do this. And it's like, Jesus Christ, guys. And y'all just not? And y'all just like, do more like subtle stuff, right? I, I just cannot take when it's being like so obvious to like divide their friendship apart. It just it just bugs me. Couldn't bear with it past that point. If it would have been a little more subtle, and like if they wouldn't have had as like dramatic reactions to what was going on. And it would have been more of like a, uh, hmm, let's investigate. Uh, who would have said that about such and such? Uh, who is the one making up all these false rumors? Which one of us is the traitor? Kind of thing that they had in the beginning, where it was uh, the main character thinking along the lines of, is there a traitor? Is this game rigged, maybe? Is uh, something you know kind of going on behind the scenes? And there was like a way to get out of it. Uh, it all just turned into a huge loot fight, essentially, we could call it. And I did not like it. And so I decided to drop it there. It might get good later on, but from what I saw, it was... The first episode was good. The second and third were... Eh. And I was just like, I uh, don't care anymore. Also, don't remember any of the characters' names, so... I mean, that's, that's kind of what happens when they have generic Japanese names. Uh, those don't really click in my head, because they're not, like, special. It's like if a main character's name was Adam, for example, and they didn't have any, like, defining features about them. You know, like, it's... Oh, it's Adam from that show in which he carries this huge freaking sniper rifle. Yeah, that Adam. It's like, yeah, they're all dressed in school uniforms with uh, normal hairstyles and they have normal names. So it's like, I don't know who any of these characters are. It's like, you could see them in a uh, screenshot a year from now and be like, I have no idea what that show is. Even if you watched it and loved the show, uh, it would be like, God, who was that character again? What were they from? You know, you just see like a, a portrait of the character. Very generic. Uh, but yeah, I, I just didn't like the show. So I just dropped it real quick. Like, all right, next up then, huh? The last one that I dropped, it was Don't Hurt Me, My Healer. Also, Kono Healer. Uh, Mendo Kusai. 
メノメノクサイメノクサイ I guess it's not please don't hurt me, so it wouldn't be who to say, huh? Anyway, <clears throat> getting the, uh, the Japanese name aside, the please don't hurt me healer, or don't hurt me healer, I should say. Um, this one, I, I thought I liked it in the first episode. It, uh, you know, it made me laugh at times. It had good humor, I felt, where it was just kind of like slapstick stuff, like uh, yeah, I was fighting a bear. A healer comes up and is like, hey, you need help? Seeing the guy is clearly struggling, and the guy's like, uh, yeah, of course I need help. And then uh, they kind of have a back and forth. And then the guy's like, okay, excuse me, Mr. Bear. Can, can you give us a second? And the bear's like, oh, yeah, not a problem. Suddenly speaks, funny shit, right? And lets them have time to talk. And then while they're arguing, oh, the bear like interjects and basically... <laughs> Uh, diffuses the argument between them. Hilarious shit. Perfect. The scene in the first episode where the healer uh, healed the guy who got injured and uh, is like, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't heal your face. It it's horrible. It's awful. Uh, it it's bad. And then they show him a mirror and he's like, this is what I've always looked like. It's like, ah, uh, that's my kind of humor. Where it's like, you can kind of see it coming. But when it happens, it's just, it's, it's good. But the thing is, while that is good in like an episode, like a 20 minute little thing, whatever. When it is stretched for 12 episodes, or even over two, because I was bored with it the second episode. And yeah. I just got very, well, this is just kind of really tedious. But that was my thought while watching the second episode. I was like, this is kind of tedious. And uh, I don't really want to continue watching it, was my thought. The source of it is a, a digital manga. So I feel like that is the ideal uh, medium in which to consume this particular uh, thing, particular bit of entertainment, where uh, it's not unnecessarily stretched out to the 24 minute or however long time limit that it needs to run. It can just go bam, 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 joke, 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 and uh, Kind of go from there. I like the funnies that this show has. I don't like the time between the funnies where it's just kind of tedious and them like walking places and nothing really going on. You know? That stuff kind of is, drives me a little tediously. You know? So just a little bit tedious for me. So I, I quickly dropped it and uh, thought no more of it. Yep. But, everyone, those are the anime that I have dropped this season. Only four of them. Only four this season. The rest of them, the other uh, uh, 11 that I'm watching, have been going good. And I'm in no way, shape, or form planning to drop any of the others. The rest of them are all going really good, and I am into them. And I, I keep being like... Okay, what's gonna happen next? Even on the ones that are like kind of slice of life ones, like uh, 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 Aransan and the uh, the Aiman one, which is just kind of like, you know, it's just them kind of living their daily lives. Uh, those are pretty uh, pretty interesting. Aransan, I will say, can be a little bit um, cringy or slow or something I don't necessarily want to look at or watch. And so I'll kind of skip through certain parts of it if I think it's really dumb. <laughs> but uh, overall, I do like some of the gags that they do in it. And it's pretty funny. Um, like in the most recent one, for example, you uh, run into Aaron San's little brother, and it is hilarious. 
to me. And also kind of cute and sweet at the end as well. So that's, it's really nice. Um, but this whole last episode was like about sports and them doing sports and competing. And since I'm not really into sports, I didn't really care a lot for it. And so I skipped through a decent amount of it because I was like, yeah, I don't really care about them doing this particular activity. Uh, so yeah, fun times. But yeah, I will, uh, I might do like a mid-season review here. Just kind of a, uh, a real quick overview of like, yeah, this show's going good. This one's going good. This one's going good. This one's going good. Honestly, I don't really know what to say other than this is going good. But uh, yeah, a little mid-season review here in maybe uh, a couple days or something. Uh, I think all of them are getting near the midway point. We're almost episode six for everything except for uh, a couple of cuckoos and uh, the summertime uh, one. Uh, they started later, that's to be expected. But yeah, it's going to be fun, interesting, cool. I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. I really like some of them, and I'm hoping to continue watching them. So these are the four that I dropped, everyone. If you were looking forward to them and I dropped them, sorry. They just uh, didn't do it for me. They could be good shows, don't get me wrong. Um, Dawn of the Witch, Virgin Road weren't too bad, but they just weren't it for me. They didn't have that hook that I needed to continue watching them, is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, thank you all, everyone. You guys have a lovely time, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.